welcome to another Quick Shots vlog. Boom! Man, I've got so many things I want to rant about, but today is not today. Not today. Today is today. Today is not the day. Um, I think I may have a rant in a few weeks. Um, no, I need to get through this pretty quickly, so I'm going to jump straight in. Uh, competition results um, for the April Boom competition. Um, to win a copy of the Photo View Photographing the Dolomites uh, book. I'm going to go uh, through those. Uh, from today until... Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Let me check. Uh... Do, 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 do. When's the closing date for the next one? Let's say Monday the 10th of June. Monday the 10th of June. Um, from today until Monday the 10th of June, get your entries in for the May Boom competition. And you may win Photographing Snowdonia Mountains by Nick Livesey. You will have seen a... Uh, I kind of did a review for this book. Really good. Um... So uh, from today until 10th of June, you have got to get your entries in, your favourite image that you've taken um, during the month of May. OK, top five images that are received for the April uh, competition. Going to go through those and then I am going to pick a winner. And then after that, uh, there will be a, another inspiration uh, gallery um, featuring three photographies, uh, three photographies, three photographers. Um, and uh, I'll say more about that at the end of this. Anyway, let's jump straight in. Uh, okay, so there we go. Right. Um, first image, first image uh, from the April Boom competition is by Ian McLeod. Uh, this rather uh, nice uh, beach scene with that fantastic looking foreground of this sand here. Um, Funnily enough, there are three square crop images um, out of the five. So I was kind of in a bit of a squarey mood uh, this month. Um, really, really nice. What I really like about this image is it's um, particularly natural. Uh, there's no over-processing. Uh, the colours aren't saturated. It just, just looks like... Um, it's uh, it's pretty much straight out of camera. Um, there's perhaps a bit of sharpening that's been go uh, that's gone on there, a little bit of uh, adjustment to the curves or something. But it effectively looks um, particularly natural. And if I was standing in this uh, position, this is the scene as I expect it would have looked. So um, that's uh, that's sort of my first piece of critique for it. Really, um, it's um, particularly natural. I don't like over processed images. Um, particularly unless um, they are complementary to the scene um, you know I, you see a lot of digital art these days Ooh, risk of another rant no I'm not going to mention it um, it's natural uh, there are a couple of things or, well three things that I think um, uh, cause issues with this particular image and you know this is this is just my um, my opinion, um, you may think differently, uh, and I'm sure Ian probably does as well, but I'll, I'll point them out and just, uh, and, and see whether you, uh, agree. Um, first issue is here on the left hand side, uh, and it's the, the Damaran grasses have kind of coming in from the side of, uh, the image, which isn't so bad, but it kind of crosses the horizon line here. And there's a little building there, which is, which is um, somewhat obscured by the maram grasses, which is not a bad thing. You know, um, you could clone that out, but but this this kind of um, breaking of the horizon line um, stands out. When you look at the rest of the image, the rest of the image is quite clean, but this little bit's just a little bit messy. Um, the other thing is this clump of grass on the left hand, on the right hand side. It's quite dark uh, in terms of, you know, it's in shadow. It's um, quite a hefty clump of grass that, uh, and it's, and it's creating this quite strong shape coming in on the right hand side. So um, once you've noticed it, 
and you just look at the, the you know the rest of the image um if you're not necessarily focusing on anything your eye will const will now pick up that right hand um clump of grass it's really quite strong and that's kind of a you know that's a border distraction um the final thing is uh, just up here this piece of grass here um is again just breaking the the, or touching the, the horizon line it's just creating this this tension right in the middle of uh, the image so you know if things that you could have done differently um, to avoid that in the field. You could have um, raised the tripod up potentially a little bit higher and pointed the camera um, a little bit down. Um, the height will have allowed some separation here and the pointing down a little bit more will um, would have meant that you wouldn't have lost this, this lovely, lovely foreground here necessarily. I don't know. It really depends on the situation um, Ian, that you were in when you were there. But, uh, but ultimately, you know, I think it hangs together as a particularly nice image um particularly i like this this shadow here the, the shape of this shadow is like a teardrop kind of uh shape it really adds a, um some sort of three-dimensionality to uh, the image and then of course the the foreground with these uh waves in the sand is um particularly delightful uh to address these um these edge issues here i was kind of thinking uh you know, I go back to my favourite type of crop, which is a 5-4 portrait, and I think it kind of works here a little bit better. Um, and it would be a way of avoiding having to do any cloning. Um, it's just thinking about the scene a little bit differently and going for a 5-4 eliminates that um, uh, that that shadowy grass on the right hand side and also gets rid of these long grasses uh on the left hand side and i think it just ends up being a slightly better balanced image um this strong uh hill is more towards uh, the center uh then as well um just a suggestion uh, you might think differently uh but there we go that was uh, my thoughts around that one second image is by larry platner and this is a place i know well avon Kleur um or Chleur, uh, um, in Snowdonia, um, uh, Trevan here. And I, I've picked this image out. Um, uh, well done, uh, Larry, because it's not, a, it's not a, an easy location. It's, uh, I see a lot of images from this particular, uh, location. Um, and uh, you, you've managed to. Uh, one of the one of the problems is normally that the, the the river is running away from you, and it's really hard to get anything coming in, particularly at the side or coming towards you in terms of w rushing water. And I can see you've tried, you've you've thought about that um, here, Larry. Um, the ex the final execution um, isn't uh, isn't exactly spot on, but there's there's a there's a few things that you need to think about when you are in this location. One is Clin Ogwen, um, the lake here, and you see a lot of compositions, especially portrait versions of the composition uh, where you, this this edge is cut off uh, some way pe people are concentrating on Trevan um, and they don't necessarily notice the lake so much um, and uh, you end up getting this the lake cut in half a way to avoid that is by trying to compose with maybe you know there's a rock in the foreground which which creates a natural closure um, or you get low enough behind the landscape here that um, again it closes it off which is what Larry's kind of done here um, the lake continues around um, around the corner but because of the, the topography of the land it kind of cl closes it off um, here it's also slightly uh, I think the um, the horizon line is off or oh, there's something going on with the image on the right hand side this is sloping down um, it might might be something to do with um, how wide you were shooting um, some distortion I'm not entirely sure but I like the foreground and I think maybe making a little bit more of this foreground down here would have um, uh, stood you well uh, and if you'd done that then you may have avoided this um, really muddy area on the left hand side here which it really isn't uh, adding much but um, great conditions um, I love these types of conditions uh, you know normally results in getting an absolute soaking afterwards um but uh yeah not uh not an easy location uh, to get uh, right so um good effort larry um hopefully some of those uh, tips on uh, on the particular scene um will help 
stand you in good stead if you go back. Next one is Andy Poole. Um, this is on Moyle Berved uh, in Snowdonia again. We've got Snowdon in the background, Crib Goch, um, and uh, uh, um, oh, name escapes me, Ikluith. Ikluith um here on the uh, on the left hand side and he's found some really nice foreground i really get it's really boggy around there but this one's a particularly nice one uh, apologize for the resolution of this and he did send me a higher resolution by we transfer but um i wasn't around it was a busy period of time and i didn't manage to download the high res i don't think um and if i did i can't find it anywhere um before it expired so it's slightly low res this image but ultimately you know you don't need to see the high-res version to uh, to see what Andy has done here. He's got um, it's got some lovely grasses, some nice tonality to it. Uh, the, the the background's dark and um, and crucially, you know, th- this this uh, landscape here hasn't been darkened by overuse of a uh, a graduated filter. So. Um, uh, nicely nicely balanced i uh, like the colors um and uh yeah quite uh i think i might have to go and find this little pool myself at some point and have a little play with it but uh, uh good work andy i um quite like that and i like this this clump of grass down in the left hand corner because there's a risk here that this area is kind of dead space but there's these some nice curls going on with these grasses um so it uh, it creates some interest in this area that would otherwise be um dead space next up ian uh, ian lewis um now i'll i'll say now um uh, compositionally i you know ian i think there's there's a few things that you could have done differently i mean I, i've included this image because i really like uh your treatment in terms of processing um it's not overdone um the uh, i can imagine the light was actually like that um if i'd seen it with my uh, open eyes um some things to uh, maybe think about uh, in the future uh, if we're including buildings and all sort of man-made objects um they're they're very very close to the edge here if not clipping um clipping the edge so i'd always look to try and avoid including that kind of detail uh, in an image and if it can't be avoided then allowing some space uh, around the edges um the sand here looks well it looks really nice and it's untouched i guess this the the tide was going out so you've not had many people walking across it um but there's some really great detail um down on these uh, on these edges uh and with this particular light i just kind of feel like a, a, a slightly different composition maybe getting lower um a little bit further to the right i don't know what was there but um uh th- it feels like there's something missing it feels like there should be something more going on here because i'm not entirely sure what the photograph um is of uh is it a vista or um or is it about the foreground um there's no interplay really between the foreground and the background so uh I'm kind of a little bit of a loss. You've got this line coming in from the bottom right hand corner, um, which is, you know, sort of textbook lead in line type of thing, but it leads out straight back out of the image. So I'm not really sure where my eye is supposed to be going. This rock in particular is, is um, really interesting, but again, it's not enough in the image or in the image enough um, to make it um, about that rock necessarily. So, so I think some, um, you know some tips uh in terms of composition when you're in the field uh and you take in an image like this um hopefully that uh that will uh stand you in good stead the next time you get conditions like this because it's really nice and i i I really quite i wouldn't mind visiting this particular uh, beach it looks quite uh it looks like it could be quite interesting especially on a stormy day uh and then finally we've got will milner uh, with this um, uh, a slightly long exposure I won't call it long exposure because I, I don't know maybe uh, um, 
we were only talking sort of half a second to uh, one and a half seconds worth of exposure. But um, but ultimately, you know, this rock, nice little rock sticking out of uh, sticking out amongst the waves, really nicely treated, um, not too dark. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of um, some of Neil Burnell's work. So I wonder, Will, if you've been out with Neil or uh, you've seen some of his work and you've you've tried to come up with your own interpretation of it but um nicely done um nicely done uh, nicely exposed i haven't really got anything else i can say about it, it just it, for me it was a really uh, standout image and as a result this is the winner of the competition uh, this month um uh, lovely detail um perfect perfect length of time on the on the shutter to give the sense of drama of the waves uh, lapping around this uh, this finger of rock um without smoothing them out, them out too much so um well done will uh you have won yourself a copy of uh, photographing uh, the dolomites like i say next competition is open until 10th of June to win photograph in the Snowdonia Mountains. Now, uh, let's move on swiftly to um, Inspiration, a uh, gallery of uh, three photographers, all uh, quite different indeed. Um, uh, first up is uh, Neil Burnell, who I just mentioned. Um, he did a, uh, a recent series of images from Wistman's Wood down uh, on Dartmoor, um, which got into the national press and all sorts of things. And since then, he's been doing another project um, of Wistman's Wood, and that will no doubt be revealed uh, sometime in the future. So keep an eye out for it, because I've seen one or two images from it, and they are absolutely spectacular. Um, but this one in particular, uh, this small project of um, Wisman's Wood in some lovely foggy conditions uh, follows really inspirational um, a, a, a often called a Lord of the Run Land Lord of the R Lord of the Rings landscape um, and uh, and you'll see why uh, next up after that is uh, Carl Mortimer and Carl has featured once or twice in one of my vlogs anyway um, one of the most underrated photographers in the country I would say uh, uh, likes to concentrate on details works a lot on projects um, and uh, his latest uh, little project uh, is about to be shown and then finally um, Tony Zellen so uh, Tony works uh, out of London and uh, concentrates a lot on street and uh, architecture uh, photography um, with a little bit of landscape thrown in. So this one is um, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, Tony is a fantastic, fantastic um, black and white photographer and uh, I've got some of his um, recent architectural work for you to feast your eyes on. So sit back, relax, and until next time, have a great time. Until next time, have a great time. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say bye for now. That's somebody else's. Um, until next time, um, keep safe and uh, keep on shooting. Cheerio.